All right, all right, all right. You guys win. I'll do an Ansible series. You know, this series was the most asked about tutorial series for a while. And it's something that I've been wanting to do, but I just never could get any time to create this series. But finally, I had some time to sit down, draft this series, come up with an outline that I think works. And here we are. I'm actually doing the Ansible series after all this time of you guys asking me over and over again for it. I'm so happy to finally have a chance to do this for you guys. Now, as I thought about how to do this series, I wanted to basically make sure that I portray Ansible in a way that makes sense. And when I was first starting with Ansible, I was kind of confused. I didn't know how to get started. And it was just so confusing trying to understand all the best practices. So what I've decided to do was go ahead and show you Ansible the way that I wish somebody showed me when I just got started or when I first started with it. And I think that the outline in this series is going to achieve that. So what I'm gonna do right now is give you guys a few notes about getting started, how this series is going to flow, and the scenario that I've come up with that is going to serve as the theme for the rest of the series. Let's go ahead and check it out. For the most part, the purpose of Ansible is to provision servers. Now here I have three servers. Now I didn't actually give them a purpose, just names. Server 1, Server 2, and Server 3 wasn't feeling very creative. But the idea is that we want to provision our servers. We don't want to have to do manual work to spin them up. We basically want to automate as much as we possibly can, and that's exactly what Ansible allows us to do. So it's kind of arbitrary how many servers you have. You could have 500 servers in your fleet, or maybe just three like we do right here. So the number doesn't really matter. Now what's missing from this picture right here is Ansible. We have these three servers, but where does Ansible fit? Now most of the time you have an Ansible control host, which is basically just another word for an Ansible server. Now essentially the Ansible server or control host will connect to the three servers in this case, or however many you have, to issue commands to provision it. Now the three servers, they don't actually have to have Ansible installed. So there's no Ansible installed here or here or here. We only have Ansible on the control host and then this Ansible server will make connections via SSH to the servers to go ahead and provision them. But the most confusing thing for me when I first started with Ansible is that there was never any guide that I had at that time that really spelled this out for me. And I had to find all of this on my own. And what I found out is that there is no one way to set up Ansible. Ansible, I like to give the equation that it's like someone dumping a bunch of Legos in your lap and they tell you to build it however you want. Now, obviously with Ansible, there are best practices. There are things that you want to make sure that you do. There are efficient ways to do things and inefficient ways to do things but there is no one right way to do things. So you don't actually have to have an Ansible control host or an Ansible server. There's an alternate scenario, and this is the scenario that we are going to go along with in this series, and that's this scenario right here. Now here, instead of having an Ansible control host, we have my laptop. We have a workstation. And essentially what it's going to be is this laptop is going to contain the scripts or the playbooks that are going to be used to run Ansible against the servers, everything is going to happen from this laptop. Now it could be a desktop, it doesn't really matter because one way that this works in the real world is you could have a Git repository and inside that Git repository is all of your Ansible playbooks. And let's just say you have other people that work with you, other administrators, they need to be able to download that repository to also be able to run the playbooks against the servers and usually in IT shops nowadays, all of this is collaborative. You have one person who will make changes, the other admins will download those changes and also be able to run them. And that's essentially what we're going to do here. Again, we have this laptop right here. So I just named it Jay's Laptop. This is going to have the playbooks on there 
and they're going to be stored in Git. And that's important because if something ever happens to this laptop, maybe it crashes, hard drive dies, something like that, then all of those Ansible playbooks will go along with it and die too. We don't want that. Having everything in Git means that we're reasonably protected from things like that. But it also means that we can work collaboratively with other people on our team to benefit from the version control nature of Git along with the power of Ansible. Now in my case, I've created three VMs to simulate this. I have, for example, Ubuntu 20.04.1, then Ubuntu 20.04.2, and then Ubuntu 20.04.3. Now normally I don't like to use virtual machines on my channel because I like to show you guys everything from the bare metal. But when it comes to teaching you Ansible, I think this scenario works for VMs just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and configure these VMs with Ansible. And then we're going to do so from another VM that I am calling my workstation VM, which will simulate your laptop or desktop. And then we're gonna go ahead and use that to run all the commands against these three servers. And I'll take you through all of the basics, like installing packages, creating users, all the way up to actually creating roles as well. So you'll learn everything you need to know to be productive with Ansible in this series. And that's basically the outline that we're going to follow. First, I'm going to show you guys how to use SSH keys to authenticate to your servers. That's important to know. I'm also going to show you how to create a Git repository, pull that down, make changes, and push it back up to master. Then I'm going to show you how to install Ansible. And then from there, we're going to get deeper and deeper into the world of Ansible until you guys know enough to be productive. Now, the first set of videos should already be up on my channel if I don't already have all of them by now, by the time you are watching this. So go ahead and click on over to the second video and let's get started.